YouTube. I'm Pimstar, and this is Rose-Colored Goggles um, for uh, Open TTD Episode One. So yeah, uh, just to let you guys know, in um, a couple weeks or so, I'm going to be moving IRL to a new house, to a new state. Uh, so I'm going to be going undergoing a brief hiatus. However, I figured, you know what? Let's break open an old favorite of mine. We haven't done a rose-colored goggles series in a while. So this mini-series uh, will be diving into exactly that. And you know what? Hey, I'm moving, so it's only appropriate to do a game that's about moving. Yeah? Yeah. So OpenTTD um, is basically the modern version of uh, Transportation Tycoon Deluxe, a game that came out in 1994. Uh, that's an old game, but it has stood the test of time. It is one of the best tycoon games, in my honest opinion, and it absolutely holds up. And there's a dedicated community of people that are still to this day updating, modifying, and, and improving the game. It is available for free uh, right now. The, um, there's a link in the description where you can pick it up and play it for yourself. Uh, it's also been tuned to work with modern operating systems since the original certainly wouldn't. Um, right then, let's dive in here, shall we? We're gonna be going through a fairly standard game, but there is something, a specific gambit that, uh, uh, that I wanna show off here. Um, it's, it's an intermediate to, I, I don't want to call it super advanced, because some of the crazy advanced things that you can do in this game are even beyond my level, but there is some stuff that I want to show you here. So let's g generate a um, uh, temperate world and dive right in. So here we are on our map. Every map is randomly generated. There's tons of settings that you can tweak to influence the nature of the generation, but because it's all random, no two maps are the same. Um, now, the, uh, for those of you not familiar with the game, the, you are a transportation company. Your, your goal is to make money by moving people, goods, from um, uh, point A to point B. However, as you can see from the freeform nature of this map, you can, you, you, your point A's and point B's, you, you can define the point A's and the point B's. Um, and there's all sorts of things you can do. You can do passengers, you can do mail, you can do industrial goods, you can do you know consumer goods, you can do oil, you can do coal, lots of stuff. And there's tons of mods that expand the cargo list even further. But we're, we're playing with the standard um, set here. Just, you know, get, uh, for most of you who may be not uh, familiar with this game, we don't want to overcomplicate things and, and, you know, go too down the mod rabbit hole, as it were. Right then. So here we, what we want to do is, first things first, we want to take a look at the town directory and uh, sort it by population. Because what, we, what our, our goal here is to get our, um, we're, we're gonna be focusing more on the passengers and mail side of things. That's not to say that we aren't going to touch any industrial routes, but they're gonna be more of a opportunistic ancillary thing rather than um, you know diving into them as our primary source of income. That's not to say that industrial routes are not, are, aren't good. They, they actually really are. Um, but so can uh, passengers um, and whatnot, if you do them right. Now we can see here there's a whole bunch of cities um, from uh, the tiniest one of Hatthorn, 124 people, to Sarnway um, with uh, almost 3,000 here. The other thing to note is that the uh, towns that have the city gold tag here will grow twice as fast as any uh, um, as the other towns, all else being equal. So that's part of our that's going to be part of our strategy here as well. Right then. So, what are we going to do? How are we going to start this off? Well, there's a few things that we can dive into. Um, what we want to do is we want to find two towns that are of decent size, but also of decent distance from each other. Um, that, you know, can still be traversed in a, in a decently, decent way. And I think I found our two. But the other thing we want to do is we got to rename these towns for our name and game patrons. So give me just a moment. 
Okay, we are done naming. So here are all of our name and game patrons and all of the different cities that they represent. Um, we will try to hook up most of, of the cities into our network, um, but I, I put them I put, put them named them along the path of where I intend to be building. Um, but we have to start small. We cannot hook everybody all up at once. That would be a nightmare. So then. Let us begin. And we have to choose a space to begin. And I'm looking at Cameron Romanopolis as our main city here. We have some, we have some, uh, some potential early routes that we can get out of it. Um, and sort of start fortifying our, our, our main gambit here, our main tactic as it were. Um, before launching into a much larger, much more ambitious project. But you gotta start small. You gotta start making money one way or the other. Uh, so right, what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna turn back on transparency just so I can see what I am doing, where I'm going, and what I'm building. Um, all right, so Cameron Romanopolis. The first things that we want to do here is set up a, uh, a station here that is close to a lot of buildings, but also is has room to grow. It can it, it can do more things from from the front and the back. It can be a pass through station. Um, so what we're gonna do here is um, I'm gonna just demolish at, at the risk of annoying the town, which they they can get very annoyed at you if you do too much demolition around their area. Um, we're going to demolish this one riddle road right here. And um, I kind of want to, yeah, we can start down in the depths here and then modify the terrain later on if we need to grow the station. But what's important is that we have, the station has access both in front and in behind. Um, actually, it would be a little smarter for us to go one back. So give me one second. Landscaping. That point needs to go down. That co covers as much as we can. So that's our first station. Now, what are we going to do with it? Well, we we want to hook up some some intermediary um, um, supplies here. We're going to ultimately bring you to. Oh, let's go with New Black City. Now, New Black City, we do not need to have a full pass through station here. We want to have have it double barreled here, but this might actually help us out. A little bit as far as um, if we can do something like this then we wouldn't really we'd be able to capture most of the stuff um, let's see if we can just demolish these without annoying them too much because again if you destroy too much around they'll they'll refuse to allow you to build which would be not ideal all right so new black city and um, Cameron Romanopolis. And don't worry, Chickensburg, I see you there. We're, we're gonna be bringing Chickensburg into the fold, but it's not quite big enough to really warrant a full station, but I'm gonna show you how, how we're going to uh, pull this in and, and make this effective. Um, now, a little, uh, little tip here for rail. So I always like to build my railways in twos. Uh, you can always have stations wider than just these two lines, but do them two at a time. You can always add more later. Two allows you to have a forwards and backwards lines, which allows you to have multiple trains on there. And what you want to do is you want to start out um, with um, two straight pieces, and then in front of it, you want to cross them over. This allows your your cars to, you, you, whether they're coming or going, can find their way onto one of the available platforms. 
Um, so the platforms are, are not necessarily, you know, meant for facing one way or the other. And I'll show you how to control that with signals here. Um, let's see, we gotta do a little bit of landscaping just to make the, uh, just to make the, the angles work properly. Um, the game can be a little fiddly about that. All right, so now same thing on this side. We wanna cross them over like that. Once I complete the line, I'll, I'll show you the signal work that you use to make this, make this work. The other, another little tip here is that when the game measures how much it wants to pay you the cargo, um, it measures it um, by, by basically straight angles. So basically, if we were to bring people from Cameron Romanopolis to New Black City, it's gonna measure the distance going here and then here, and then total that up and decide. So by actually cutting the corner, by going primarily diagonally here, we're, we're lowering the distance that we have to travel, lowering the amount of track that we need to lay down, but still reaping the benefit of a higher payout because of how the game calculates things. That's not to say that you can never do, you know, um, you know straight up and down, left, right, but it's more effective to do it diagonally. Uh, where, where it makes sense. So that's part of the reason why we're starting with this particular connection is because these two are separated by primarily a diagonal. Now there's, there's some terrain you can't do diagonals on, so but that's okay. We'll just have them hop up this little hill here and then go right back to the diagonals. And we might actually need to do some straight lining here. Because we don't want to, we don't want to uh, clip Chickettsburg here. And we're good. All right, so that's the main line here. A little herky-jerky, I'll admit, but um, it works, it works. Now, actually, it doesn't work just yet. We need signals. Now, there are all sorts of signals out there. This isn't a, gonna be a full signal tutorial, um, but I'm gonna show you what works, um, sort of explain how it works, or at least what I like to, to do for these types of lines. Um, there are other signal tutorials out there. If there's enough demand, I might do one. Um, so what these are called, these are called path signals. These basically allow trains to proceed if they can reserve a safe point of, of entry here. So what we want to do here is we want path signals here. Basically, if a train wants to leave the station, these path signals are saying, okay, make sure you can reserve a safe path uh, to travel before you go there. The other type of path signals are one-way path signals. These can be passed through from behind, which is fine because we want this to be a, um, a pass through here. But these one-way signals basically say, you cannot go down this way. Which, you know, again, we're, we're enforcing left-right conformity here. Same deal goes for here. Path two, two-way two path signals here. And then you go here, you go here, and that enforces that. The other thing you can do is hold control, drag this out, and it will make path signals along the way so that the trains can be closer to each other. Same goes with that, like there. Beautiful. Now, last thing that we need here, oops, I did not mean to build that there. is a, um, a train depot. Now, there are some things that you can do to sort of expand your lines um, to make sort of like a, a pit stop to take trains that need to get out of there, out of the junction. I'm just going to put one, you know, partway along the line here. That way they're not getting, gumming up the works in front of here, but they can still do what they need to do. 
Right then. Now, there's a few more things that we need to build up before we can really um, unleash this route because while our, our two train stations are near some, some, some nice things here, some, most of these buildings, in fact, New Black City, we probably don't need to do this with as much, um, but we, um, with um, Cameron Ro Romanopoulos, we absolutely do. And that is we need to get buses. So as you can see from the coverage here, we're missing a significant chunk of the uh, of, of our catchment area. So we're, these are all passengers and mail that are not gonna be brought to our station because they can't reach it. So we need, to, we need to do something about that. So what we wanna do is first off, we gotta start with two stations near, next to our, our thing here. We're gonna do a bus stop And we're gonna do a truck stop because the uh, mail cars need a truck stop. Now, if we go back here to our oops, coverage, so we're probably gonna need one like right here-ish and then a second one over here. Um, and one thing that we can do just to help out the town Hopefully they don't get mad at me for building this because we're, we're demolishing trees. Is now, now we can put stations along the way here. So if we put you here, this covers everything on this line. And then that means we can get a truck stop over here. I do wish it would stay. Well, it doesn't quite get everything, but I'm okay leaving a few things on the table. But then over here, we can get a couple more over here. And then as the town grows, then um, these will fill in around this road that we made for the town. So that will actually just auto include them in our catchment areas. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get it far enough away over here. And by putting these two next to each other, they're added directly to the same inventory pool. Same with by putting these two next to the station, these all share the same inventory pool, which is handy. Right then, now we need a uh, truck depot. We can put one down, oh, say right here. Again, wrong direction, pin star. There we go. Now, there's an important thing to do when we're, we're setting up these routes. Uh, we're gonna set up buses. We're gonna get two buses, one for each of the bus stops here. We're gonna start there. We're gonna go straight there. But here's the thing. Normally, you know, if there's any passengers sitting here, when the bus stops here, they're gonna pick up these passengers and bring them back into town. Great, right? No, we actually want to funnel all of the population, all of the passengers into this station. We want them to be loaded onto the trains because that's where the mo most of the profit lies. So we're actually going to say transfer. So instead of doing a back and forth service, this is just gonna pick people up here, dump them there. We are gonna get paid for this route, but you're not gonna be taking people from here back to the suburbs. The way the game works is that you don't need to complete full routes. It's not like it's it's not like Air Corp um, or Fly Corp that we're playing where every person has a destination that must be reached. Um, this is basically, you know, sort of uh, broad, um, you know, yada yada, I would say would be the best way to put it. Um, it, you have passengers, they don't really care where they're going. So it's up to you to bring them to the most profitable place. So we're going to go here. We're going to go here. Um, and same deal goes for here. We're going to transfer. Now we're going to get two mail trucks 
and do exactly the same thing. Now, doing this, this may seem like a little fiddly, like, oh, you know, this is a lot of bother. There's more reasons for doing this than just funneling the passengers and the mail to our main lines. I mean, that is certainly a, an important part, but town growth depends on activity within the town. The more things being picked up or dropped off, the, the faster the town grows. So by having these little substations here, this will actually stimulate the economy of the town a lot faster. Um, even if we somehow had a magic placement with this train station in a way that can hit all the buildings by itself, it would grow slower than if we did if, if, if for not having these different stations here. So this is quite a handy way to do it. All right, we're going to hit the screen button to tell them all to go on their route, but we are not ready to unpause yet. Um, well, one, we need our train. Uh, yeah, let's get our train. Let's do our train. So now we have to pick our from our three engines. There, you know, we're starting off in what uh, 1950. Um, technology marches ahead as as you go along, so new things come out. But for now, this is all we have to work with. Um, and what we're looking at is basically the max speed, um, the total power, and also the reliability. That's, those are the most important ones. Of course, cost is a big one. The Kirby Paul, way too small. Um, 94 in reliability is looking really good. And the other, the other interesting thing is that while the models available at each time period are the same, their exact stats are randomized. In the last test game I did of this, the uh, the Chansey Jubilee was like an 82% reliability. So pretty, pretty good having a 94. Let's see what the Jinsu is. 92, also really good. Also really expensive. I think we're gonna go with the Chansey. It's a lot cheaper. It's a little slower, but it can still do what we need it to do. And it's actually the most reliable. So we're gonna buy one of those. Um, so here we're gonna do two mail cars and the rest passenger cars. That's just the ratio of how the thing hits out. See this 5.0 over here? That's telling us that our train can fit into exactly a length five station, which is what we made our two stations. So we don't want to make it too bigger. Now this one, this one's not doing any kind of, of, of um, transfer. We're just doing stock standard pickup, drop off, two-way transportation, the, the classic. So we're going to set you on your way. But last but not least, we, we need to set up New Black City here. Now, New Black City itself, there's, we've got, we could, we could go with, I'm gonna put down some, some um, you know, some, some um, bus stations and truck stations here. Even though I'm okay leaving these on the table, we wanna stimulate New Black City to grow a little bit, <coughs> and that will certainly help it. So, what we're gonna do, we're going to get our construction. We're probably going to build these along the roads here because this is a nice little loop. So we're going to get you here and then we're going to get a truck station over here. And by putting them diagonal with each other, not only do we grab this last little thing here, they share the same inventory. They can do it diagonally. Now, as far as where to drop them off, um, I'm actually gonna loop them around here because we were gonna get Chickensburg just coming over to New Black City through busing, just pure busing. They're, they're not big enough to have their own rail station, but they're certainly worth have, uh, the attention needed for buses. Hang on, I'm gonna fix their landscape real quick. That's better. We're gonna give them a little bit of better roads here real quick. So what we'll probably do there we go. We're gonna have our two drop-off stations here. There we go, New Black City, New Black City. Um, and then what we'll probably do is yeah, do something like this. There we go. That way, Chickettsburg can hook themselves up. All right, now let's find a good place for Chickettsburg. This 
we'll cover all of it. Um, and then we could do like a, an in-road truck depot over here. And yeah, that's basically all of Chickensburg is just gonna go by bus and, and mail truck. All right, let's get ourselves a depot, like right here. And we're gonna get, um, actually, we're gonna do pretty much the same as before, but instead of it being two different parts of the same city, we're doing two different things to the one city, but they're both funneling them both back to the station here. So Chickensburg to New Black City. And we're gonna do the same gambit, yeah. transfer. We want those people on the station where they can be moved by the more profitable rail. Oops, not on the load. All transfer, please, thank you. And then same goes for our MPS mail trucks. There you go, set them all loose. And I think we're actually ready to unpause here. And no, don't worry, I'm not gonna cut the episode before we get to see everything in action here. So we got our train doing its thing. It's gonna take a little while for everything to warm up. You basically need to have your trains and or buses visit the stations once um, empty in order for them to, um, you know, basically activate the station and tell the station, hey, there's, there's going to be passenger service or mail service here. And then that will cause the stations to actually start accumulating people. So these first couple of runs are all going to be empties, um, but that's just natural. Now that we've, now that we've done this, now we're going to start actually accumulating some passengers and it's it's a bit of a trickle i'll admit Ooh, but these are not a bit of a trickle yeah i figured that these would be kind of kind of big so we're gonna need we're gonna need to clone that one because we're gonna need more buses to handle <coughs> the passenger load here because each bus can only hold like 31 people. We're probably also going to need a uh, another oh, not enough cash. Wow, we 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 invested our initial budget. Now you can take out loans, which I intend to do. Uh, but we spent our initial budget. If we didn't have access to loans, I'd say we'd be able to to stabilize off of this. Hmm, we're probably going to need a few more clones here. Clone you. All right, now our train is has come back for the first time for reals. So we got 84 passengers and 23 bags of mail. Still kind of humble. The the train itself can hold 280 passengers and 60 bags of mail. Um, so it's not full up yet, but we're just warming things up. See that transfer income? We still get paid for bringing the people to the station. And then those people are now on the train themselves. So, they, so yeah, as that's emptying those passengers out, the passenger count here is filling. Now let's see how we're doing at New Black City. Not bad. You, you guys are keeping up just fine, and you guys are keeping up just fine too. So we don't need too many spanned out. Uh... All right, twenty-three forty. Not too bad. Also, um, yeah, Nighthawk City to Zenidar Bay. Uh, where's Nighthawk City? Oh! 
They want these two to, to talk with each other. I mean, it's a little distracting here, but I do actually eventually want to plug Zenidar Bay into Nighthawk City. We could we could just get a... I wouldn't do rails here. This would just be pure... Um, pure trucks. So yeah, we might consider that. But right now, we just need to fully stabilize our current operations here. Yeah, 201 passengers, 110 mail. We might actually want to flip our, uh, our the number of mail bags that we have here. Yeah. You know, in previous test games, I had three mail, five passengers. Let's let's uh, configure that real quick. We're gonna we're gonna swap out one passenger carriage for a mail carriage to keep up with the mail. Plus, this will give them a, a little round of free maintenance. All right. So we sell one passenger carriage and we get one more mail car. Off you go. And that way we'll be able to keep up with the mail. Because mail is actually more profitable than passengers. The other thing we can consider doing, and this is why we built the two track thing, is grab another train. If this one train cannot keep up, we we can do more. Yeah, so we're we're soaking up everything, and yeah, now our income is 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 ticking up nicely. Uh, how are we handling here? So that's fine. We may need one more bus because even after this bus stops here um, it's not gonna have enough so we got a clone but that's gonna help uh, Cameron Romanopolis grow faster the other thing I might do just to make the, tr the, the trips a little shorter for them oh well they built something here it's about to say as I put the route road up here Well, let's see if they let me get away with it. Nope, nope. We've we've mucked around too much, so the authority is not. They'll they'll become happier with us, um, but they they're not uh, happy with us enough to allow us to knock down one of their buildings, which is fine. That's fine. But yeah, town grows every fifty three days because of all the economic activity, and that's going to get shorter and shorter. All right, did you leave anything? You left more mail and passengers too. All right, I think my friends, it is time. You know, here's what we're gonna do, just because we wanna send it down here. Because this is, yeah, New Black City is the, the smaller of the two. We'll get one over here. And we will clone that train. Not enough money, of course. That's all right, that's what loans are for. And now we have two trains going at this. Also, the frequency of which you pick up cargo affects your station rating. The more frequent, the better. Um, so by having more frequent service, even if our trains are not 100% full, they're still going to be picking up goods faster and that's going to get more net goods to us. Um, yeah, we are having trouble keeping up with this mail. Uh, one thing I might do here, I'm going to put another station over here. Ooh, did you, did you will, willingly knock something down? No. 
that's just a building in progress. Will you let me get this now? Nope, that's all right. Because I want to really shorten this route here. Yeah, so the passengers have already recovered, thanks to the uh, bus drop-offs. We still have tons of mail. Good amount of money and, and passengers and whatnot coming from, uh, from New Black City here. Yeah, see, even though they're on, you know, the quote-unquote wrong-facing way, it's still fine because they get out of each other's way. And see how the track gets a little darker there? That's, that's the train reserving its spot. All right, folks. So I think we're off to a good, healthy start. So in our next episode, we look to expand our network um, and make our, our gravy train, and by gravy train, I mean passenger train, uh, all, the, you know, all the more profitable for us. So if you guys like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and leave me a comment. Good, bad, or indifferent, your feedback's always welcome. So until next time, Spin Pin Star signing out. See ya!